Can you guys imagine how it is to be objective and to go to a flea market? It's like speed dating, essentially. <laughs> <laughs> or like a garage sale. You're like, you're yeah. throwing this out? Like, this is amazing. <laughs> Welcome back to Other People's Lives. I'm Joe Santagato. I'm Greg Dybeck. For anyone out there that would like to be a guest on our show, hit us up. Our email is oplpodcast at gmail.com. Just send us an email and we'll get back to you. Today, we're speaking to someone about objectophilia, which is a romantic and sexual attraction to objects. I guess specific objects. I guess they vary per person, uh, but we're going to find out exactly what we're dealing with. But we've got the guests on the line. Thank you so much for being on today. Thank you for having me. I'm super excited to be here. Yeah, no, we're excited to have you. We're excited to learn about this. And just to kick it off, uh, can you give your definition of objectophilia and sort of what it means for you specifically? Gladly. Okay, so um, the more popular term actually for objectophilia inside of the community is objectum sexual or objectum sexuality. Um, or for short, some people might call it objectum or just OS. There's some people also call it just objectum romantic, but for the for cl clarity's sake, I'm just gonna use objectum or objectum sexuality. Okay. Um, I think people prefer using that term because objectophilia kind of implies it's a fetish, which it is not, to be clear. What is it? Mm -hmm. um, for me and most people, objectum sexuality is just a sexuality. Like for example, being gay is or being straight is. And for me, I'm a gay man, but I also ident identify as objective sexual as like another thing in my life. Like someone might be gay and aromantic or asexual. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, I guess we'll just start kind of like sort of at the beginning. When did you realize that you had, uh, you know, this and not had identified? Identify. This. Sorry. <laughs> I don't want to say <laughs> the wrong thing. Um, but yeah, when did you first realize that? You had, a, uh, which one are we using? A objectum? Objectum, yeah, let's lose that term. Okay, so um, yeah. Yeah. So basically, I found out only a few years ago, but technically my first crush on an object, which was my first crush in general, was after I got my Nintendo DS Lite during Christmas 2008, and I quickly got insanely attached to it. Like, I, not just because of like, because I love video games. I wouldn't even have to be playing any games. I would just have it with me. I'd take it to bed with me. I would kind of treat it like most kids would treat like a plushie or something or any object they love. And at the time, I didn't really question it because kids love objects. But that's normal. They get attached. And during my teens, I didn't really question it at all until I think this was 2021 when I bought a stethoscope for myself. And... Um, I can explain why maybe in a second. But after I bought that stethoscope, I got insanely attached to it. When I would use it on myself, I would get insanely flustered. I would feel a sexual attraction towards it. Like I would with my partner at the time, for example, because I have a partner too, and they know about this. And um, I realized, okay, maybe those feelings I had as a child were in temporary. So this has been my whole life. <laughs> but I've been identifying as objecting since I'm like 19, like for the past few years. Wow. That's interesting. You said yeah. it, your first crush was an object before you even had a crush on a person. Precisely. Yeah. <laughs> so for that, let's use the Nintendo DS as the example. Mm -hmm. At the time, I'm assuming you didn't really have the language around what this feeling was, but do you remember, no, do you remember, yes. you said you did or you didn't? Oh, I didn't. I'm sorry. You could oh, right. So... Do you, can you just sort of describe how you began to realize that it was more of an attraction than just liking this object for, you know, its purpose of playing games? Like where, how do you kind of begin to figure out that it's romantic or sexual? And was it both with this object? So in this case of my Nintendo DS, it's like, um, on one hand, you know, I'd just be happy to have it to play games. But for example, if my parents took away my, uh, my console, most kids would obviously be uh, pretty annoyed, pretty pissed off about having their toys be taken away. But I would be absolutely shattered because I felt like they were taking away someone that meant a lot to me. Um, I already didn't have friends as a kid, which some might think, oh, maybe that's why you're attached to that. But 
not nah, whatever that means. Either way, I was like, um, it was really important for me to have it. For example, if my parents forget, for example, took on my charger, that's fine because I would still have my console with me. I would take it in bed with me, like I said. I would like, I would always have it with me, no matter what. And it was my comfort. And I also had another object at the time that I loved, which was my violin, because I was playing that at the time. And I would treat it similarly, but just a little more carefully because violins are fragile. At the time, I didn't really think of it as something romantic per se, because I didn't have crushes on people at the time yet. So I didn't really question it. Mm. But it was also not sexual at the time. That came only like as a recent realization. How recent? Um, like I said, I got my stethoscope in 2021. And that's when I realized there was a sexual attraction there. Not just stethoscopes. That is one of my favorite things. And my current, I call them my objects of desire because I think that's cute. But um, that's the main one I'm attached to. I also really, really love electric guitars. I have an electric guitar in my room and I, I, I love it. I, that's like, why I also feel pretty continue, sorry. It's, it's the one specific to you though, right? It's not just like any stethoscope. It's like my stethoscope that I have is the one I love the most, but I do get attached to stethoscopes in general. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. And so it's like being in a relationship, but seeing other people, like you might wonder, but like you have yours. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's like essentially like a relationship. And did you have this attraction before you bought it and that was the purpose of buying it? Or did you need a stethoscope for something else? And then you realized when you had it, like, oh God. I love this thing. Okay, I have a really funny story for this, actually. So this is something I probably wouldn't tell most people, but on here, I don't really care. Um, I bought it because I have a fetish for um, intestinal sounds, specifically, and I'm also really attached to heartbeats. And that's, it's, I found it really intimate, and I was like, to satisfy this fetish I have, I might as well buy a stethoscope, right? Because that's really helpful in that situation. Smart. And... Yeah, I um, didn't realize how attached I would get to it. And I know it's not just the fetish itself being like, you know, I associate it with something I find sexually attractive. That's why I like it. I don't even have to use it to get insanely flustered to just have it like on my neck or something. And wow. it's like, uh, yeah, it's overwhelmingly nice feeling. So you said that you have a partner, right? I do have a partner since four years almost before you used it. Okay, so... Yeah. Is there a difference or is it sort of the same arousal and feeling you get from like your partner turning you on to the stethoscope? It's, I would say it's a little different because my partner can reciprocate those feelings. My partner can be like, hey, I really, I'm really in the mood for this or that. A stethoscope can't really do that. I feel that way just in general being objective that it's different from how I am. Um, I don't expect objects to give me the same look back that I give them. But, you know, with a partner, I would obviously want that. Okay. It's Which, yeah, different. makes perfect sense. But the arousal mm -hmm. you feel, are they on similar levels? I would say they're on similar levels, except I love my partner a little more than the object, obviously. Okay. <laughs> and is this, something, is this something that you incorporate into your sex life? I, um, well, my partner and I are in a long distance relationship, but ideally I would want to. Yeah. If you got to use the stethoscope on your partner to hear their heartbeat, that's <laughs> gotta be the ultimate yeah. like, prize, right? <laughs> yeah. That's a yeah. threesome. That's a threesome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's essentially a threesome. <laughs> <laughs> and you got the DS in the corner. It's, it's just it's, watching. It's, it's, <laughs> 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 it's a whole thing. Um, wow. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's stay on the stethoscope because this is the one that made you realize that there was a sexual attraction, not just a romantic attachment. So when you first got the stethoscope, I guess, how did you realize that it was sexual and how do you act that out? Um, it's like a weird feeling. I, I should probably clarify. I'm one of the few people who doesn't believe that objects are sentient or have a soul. I know a lot of people do. There is a different term for it, actually. It's, um, it's a perception of object sentience, individuality, and consciousness, or POSIC for short, where people believe objects have sentience. And I don't necessarily be a flip, but I can go in detail further because I'm getting a little off tangent. 
Um, I can't really say, oh, this, I feel like this thing loves me back. But it's like, I feel like a similar type of attraction using the stethoscope on me as I would like, if, for example, if I was like kissing my partner or mm -hmm. wanting to engage in sexual relations with my partner. It's hard to explain, but um, uh, I, I do also get off while using the stethoscope, not just because it is in relation to a fetish that I have, but I just find it insanely intimate. That's like the best way of, my, of uh, doing it for me. Okay. What about like mm -hmm. going to the doctor and them using a stethoscope on you? <laughs> I'm so glad you asked this because there is a story to that. Um, last year, I went to a doctor that I hadn't gone to before. So I got like a checkup all over. And uh, when she was using her stethoscope on me, she would point out how my heartbeat got faster. She was asking about the nervous. <laughs> and I was just kind of laying there like, yeah, I'm a little nervous. <laughs> That's so funny. Not nervous. It's really horny. funny. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, so, and you don't have to get in so much detail. I know this is a personal question. You just alluded to it. So you said you will pleasure yourself like with the stethoscope or like with the stethoscope involved. Yes, I, I do. I, um, when I'm not really involving my usual fetish of like, I listen to my own digestive sounds, et cetera. I mean, I'm not, and I don't even have to be doing that. I could just listen to my own heartbeat while getting off. And that in itself feels insanely intimate to me because like you can hear your own body get more and more excited while, um, while getting off. And I don't have a fetish for heartbeats to be clear. I know so, a lot of people might, I don't. Okay. But, so let's talk about the intestinal one because that's interesting <laughs> as well. <laughs> Uh, yes. How I did you like discover that? <laughs> yeah, these are two episodes <laughs> in yeah. one now. How did mm -hmm. you discover that you had a fetish for what was it? Intestinal sounds? Uh, intestinal and stomach noises. Yeah. It's what are some examples my of that? Just like hunger uh, noises? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little out there, but that's my thing. Um, I've been into this always. I've known since I was a child because you would see this stuff, you know, very casually and it would be insanely embarrassing for me to witness in any context. And I was like, this is weird. I don't, I don't want to be around this kind of stuff. I don't want to hear it from other people. I don't want to see it in cartoons whatsoever, hmm. but I want to, I wanted to, I just couldn't do it around other people. And then when I was like old enough to know what a sexuality is, I was like, oh, wait, I think I was just horny about it. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How do you get this? Like, how do you discover that sort of? I guess you can hear it like within yourself, your body, other yeah. people. Yeah. I guess you're gonna yeah. Yeah, you're gonna come across that. Yeah. Fairly I mean, often. it's a very casual thing to happen to people. So you, I don't know how to like put this in other terms, but like if you're pleasuring yourself, you could be listening on your stethoscope like to your own intestines, mm -hmm. and that is yes. like the ultimate way to get off. Yes, that's my ultimate way to get off. And like I said, some might think, oh, maybe he just likes the stethoscope because it's like reminds him of his fetish. But uh, no, because I don't think if that was the case, I would get just flustered by having someone else's stethoscope on me or having my stethoscope just around my neck. It, like that alone is like insane to me. Has it, there been any other items besides the Nintendo and the um, stethoscope? Um, yes. Um, my favorite types of objects, because I like to, um, I like to have some groups of objects that I like in particular. I really like medical appliances in general, but stethoscopes are my favorite. I like handheld consoles specifically, of course, because I love my DS. I love other handheld consoles too. And musical instruments, because I love music and I've been playing different instruments since I was a kid. Electric guitars being, my, my specific ones are, the stethoscope, of course, my electric guitar, and currently I don't have a console like in particular. Um, and uh, lately I've been getting to clocks. Clocks are so cute. I don't know much about them, but I love them. We like watches over here. If that counts. <laughs> Sometimes watches I feel like nice. it's romantic. My wife would say it's romantic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Almost like that. Yeah. Um, wow. So how is that like kind of like walking around? Like I'm because you're saying that it's very similar to you know, uh, like the men you're involved with as well. So like, I mean, walking mm. around, like you're saying, you just got into clocks like recently, like, and also 
I mean, you said recently you discovered that it's sort of like sexual when it comes to the stethoscope, and then you're saying, like, I'm getting into clocks. Like, is this a newer sort of, <clears throat> like, revelation for you where you're kind of, like, accepting it and now figuring out, oh, there are more things that I may be attracted to? Yeah, it's kind of like that because, personally, I didn't really know about ob objective failure or being objective outside of you know, people saying, oh, guys, you heard about the woman who married the Eiffel Tower or something right. like people might mention that everyone has heard of stories where someone is in love with an object because people find it interesting. But I didn't pay mind to it until I saw a few people on Tumblr around, I want to say, 2021 um, that identified as objectum openly. And I was like, oh, that's cool. And then it slowly clicked for me, like around the same time I got the status code. But because I, when I realized that thing with me. Immediately, I knew who to message, like, hey, I know you identify as objective. I want to talk with you about this. So mm. ever since I found that out, I've been kind of noticing more and more, oh, I like this, and I like this. And it's very casual for me. Like, all my friends know this, and they think it's fun. And some of my friends found out they're objective because of me. It's great. Oh, wow. That's cool that you've been yeah. so open with your friends. Oh, for sure. It's it's a very normal thing for me. I know it's not for most people. I think most people find it weird, which I understand. It's pretty out there. But I have fun. And my friends, it's, I don't think any of my friends would think it's like anything too weird. Like, I feel like if people get upset about it, that's like, that's a stupid thing to be upset about. <laughs> yeah, no, no. This is like making me yeah. happy. Hear it. Like, yeah. I'm just like, I hope he has fun with this stethoscope tonight. There's like, just so many objects <laughs> out there. Oh, for like, sure. <laughs> possibilities <laughs> are endless. This podcast is sponsored by Z-Biotics. Uh, Z-Biotics is the world's first pre-alcohol probiotic drink, okay? What happens when you go out and you drink some alcohol is it creates this toxic byproduct in your gut, and that's what makes you feel so rough the next day. And Z-Biotics will uh, create an enzyme that breaks that down to have you feeling better quickly the next day. So it's the first drink of the night. You have it. And listen, you can trust it. I mean, this was engineered by a team of PhD microbiologists, um, so... People who are smarter than you and me created this drink and it creates an enzyme that's going to break everything down that is toxic, uh, you know, in your gut and help you have a better tomorrow. You know, as someone who's been drinking uh, pretty consistently on the, for the better part of a decade, I can tell you that I don't bounce back like I used to. So I could use something like this. I don't know about you, but I could definitely use something that's going to make me feel better the next morning. And if you feel like you could benefit from this product, go to zbiotics.com slash OPL and use the code OPL at checkout to get 15% off of your order. It's also backed by a 100% money-back guarantee, okay? So go to zbiotics.com slash OPL right now, and when you go to check out, use that code OPL, and you will get 15% off, okay? So have this first drink of your night for a better tomorrow. Enjoy. The attachment, though, how deep is it, like, to the point that if, and I'm sorry to say this, if your stethoscope were to get, like, lost or, like, you dropped it in the street and a car ran over it and you mm -hmm. saw that happen, like, what what would you feel? Would you be in mourning? Um, yeah, it would definitely be some kind of mourning to an extent. For me, it's, like I said earlier, I want to get a little more into the object sentience of things. There's a lot of people who would believe in the community who believe in object sentience, I don't, I used to, but it kind of faded away and I'm glad because I feel like if I did stuff like what you mentioned would make me insanely distressed because mm -hmm. like I would be so afraid that something might happen and that it would basically quote unquote die. And I know other people feel that way. Right. I'm glad I don't, but I would still be really upset because no one likes it when their options break, just in general. Right. And it's, it feels kind of like a failure on my part that I didn't take good enough care of something that I feel very attached to that I love. Right. But yeah, okay, yeah. so there's people who are objectum that believe these objects that they're attached to are reciprocating love and literally have yeah. souls, I think you said? Yes, yeah, some people believe objects have souls and can recipient those feelings. I don't need them to recipient those feelings. What they do for me, like for example, I use my stethoscope and it works for me and it gives me this experience that I wouldn't have otherwise. That is enough for me. And I just give it that love back. I don't need it to like, I don't need to believe it has a soul. Okay. So, and I have a question. So let's say you go on a vacation or something. Like, do you pack your stethoscope or can you be away from it? Or, and if you can, how long do you think you can go without your stethoscope? Um, I can be away from it. I think it's 
it depends on the object. But stethoscope, for example, people would be like, hey, why do you have your stethoscope with you? And I'm like, oh, that's it's a bit awkward. I have my stethoscope on my bed, like on my bed frame um, at all times. I keep it there and I feel like it's safe there. I also have its little um, diaphragm in a in a little like, um, uh, it's kind of like a sock type of thing just to keep it warm and safe. It's like, uh, it, it's nice there, it can stay there and I'm, I'm, I don't need to take it anywhere with me. But for example, as a kid, I took my DS everywhere. I could not be away from it for even a second. Wow. So mm-hmm. I'm not even saying this to be funny, but could do you get off on, for example, like will you go on YouTube and like watch stethoscope videos? And is maybe porn's a strong word, but like is that do you consume like stethoscope content as a way to get off? I I do because like I said, it's on one. It's a really great way to advance a fetish that I already have. But even outside of that, I really like videos and similar things of people using their stethoscopes. I won't exactly get off to it, but it makes me very flustered. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm going to yeah. start making stethoscope content. <laughs> there's, a, there's a market for everything. <laughs> it's really like, for everything. It's like the yeah. times I went to a pharmacy and I would see like medical things and I would get like, it's like being a teenage boy and walking into a lingerie store, I would imagine. Okay. Okay. That That's a good analogy. I could see <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah. That is mm. so interesting. <laughs> Isn't it? It's almost like, I mean, I think that's sort of like to me, I don't know if that's weird as much as I'm sort of like weirdly a little jealous of, of it. Like imagine, because you know that feeling of like what, what you just described, like walking into a store and it's like you're in a store with your mom and then you're like, oh my God, it's the bra section. And like yeah. for some reason you're like, oh my yeah. God. You know, it's like you're like that. Like imagine having that, but like of like everyday things that could just fucking be there. You yeah. know, that's like normal for them to be there. Like, I don't know. That was such a cool feeling when you were because <laughs> it's a pleasure to look at. Like we're not wild animals who are gonna like yeah. lunge at the panties or right, like, yeah, it's exactly. just like oh, yeah, this yeah. Is nice to yeah, look you're at. Like, and boobs going think there. About. That's awesome. And yeah. then, like, that's pretty much it. But like to have that feeling, I mean, it is interesting that it's medical equipment. Like that is mm-hmm. a lot that's of people something. something a lot of people dislike. Yeah, uh, yeah. That, would, that would scare some people away. But it seems like it's the opposite <laughs> effect. Um, okay, so I mean. So you're saying like you're getting into clocks too. So like there's a, there's a possibility that this grows into a bunch of different types of objects, objects. of desire. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. About the thing you guys said, I'm really glad you see it that way. Cause like, can you guys imagine how it is to be objective and to go to a flea market? It's like speed dating. Essentially. <laughs> <laughs> or like a garage sale. You're like, you're throwing this out. Like this is amazing. Yeah, exactly. I'd be out of money. I, how do you not buy everything? Market. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, who could be like? That's what I'm saying. The only way that I could feel about it is jealousy, because everyone knows that feeling of like when you saw something for the first time, you're like, "Ooh, that made me feel a certain way," and like that's such a good feeling, an excited feeling, and like you get to relive that all the time now. Like, I'm sure one day you'll see a clock and you'll be like, "Holy shit!" (laughs) Yeah, I do that all the time. I see like a cute clock outside. I'm like, "Oh my god, guys, look at this cute thing I saw outside!" (laughs) I get so happy. It's like, I love being able to enjoy such little things of everyday life. It makes me really happy. Yeah. That's a good way to look at it. That's kind of, you Ooh. are enjoying the finer details of, of things. But exactly. have you, has everyone that you've told been accepting or have you come across anyone who kind of didn't want to be friends with you anymore, or like told you to your face that it was strange to them? Well, I'm I'm going to say I'm very lucky because most of my friends have similar, I'm going to say, quote, unquote, weird interests, even if it's not being objective. Um, also, most of my friends are also queer, so they already have, like, things that they're ostracized for, so I think they can be more understanding. Um, but I know I'm very lucky because I've seen um, documentaries of people who are objective. Like I said earlier, Erica Eiffel, who married the Eiffel Tower, for example, she got um, a medical discharge from her Air Force job because they saw it as a paraphilia, and um, which means you can't have a job anymore. Mm. Or that she got like people, she lost people that are important to her in her life because they see it as something sick or weird. Like and I've had illness. friends and yeah. mutuals. I've had mutuals on my Tumblr who get like hateful messages because um, people see it as something morally wrong, which is insane to me. <laughs> But yeah, I'm not everyone's this lucky, but I'm mostly lucky. 
And is this a non-negotiable in any relationship with a partner going forward that they have to be accepting of this? Um, I mean, I feel like if I want a partner and they weren't accepting of something so harmless, I would question why I even want to be dating them. Yeah, that's fair. Right. That's fair. As long mm-hmm. as it's not like, and that's kind of like our approach to, you know, all these episodes, we have a bunch of episodes where people are interested in, you know, a wide variety of things. And it's always just like, look, if it doesn't hurt anybody and like, yeah, it might be a little strange or weird or whatever it is, but it's not hurting anybody and it's making people happy. So like, why not? Like, exactly. Do your yeah. parents know? Um, no, but my parents don't know much about me to begin with, unfortunately. They barely know that I'm gay, and that's it. Oh, <laughs> got it. Okay. Well, they got a lot to figure out then. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff. For sure. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Do you ever plan on telling them or no? Uh, probably not. I don't have a good relationship with my mother, and my dad and I are barely getting a better relationship. So call, need, them needing to know that I'm objectified is like the lowest priority for a sure. long time. Okay. All right. All right. Mm-hmm. Are there any objects that you would want to feel attraction toward, or it does does it not work like that at all? Like, do you, is it just um, going to happen naturally? It's just going to happen naturally. Like sometimes I see certain objects, I'm like, oh, those are cute. They're not really my thing, but I can get why others are into them. I know that in the community. Um, excuse me. I know that in the community, a popular object of desire for many people are like old computers or like just old technology in general. That's a really popular one. Mm-hmm. And I like them. They're That's like, also one of the things like I like. It's like an age like. gap. No. Right. <laughs> I yeah. know, wait, yes. Like older men. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah it's that's how i see them me and my friends are like oh my god look at this hot dilf and it's just the fucking yeah. magnum odyssey or something <laughs> <laughs> the original game yeah. boy that's um, cool. yeah all right so since uh since you since objects can arouse you are there objects that really turn you off that turn me off Ooh, that's a good one i don't think i've thought about that before no i don't think there is one um, there is maybe objects that I don't feel specifically attracted to, but um, nothing. That's just like, oh, that's repulsive. Me. I can't even look at it. I don't think there are any objects I find particularly repulsive. At most, I just feel nothing. Yeah. Um, another thing I might feel towards objects is like I, I, I collect CDs, for example, but I don't feel attracted to them. It's more so like, in a way, it's a kinship because my my online persona is a CD, for example. Wait, your online persona and what? My, my online persona is a CD, so I don't feel particularly attracted to CDs, but I do really love them. The Wait, what does that, that, what does that mean? Your online persona is a CD. What do you mean? Um, it's like my, when I, I, I'm an artist, I have a persona that I draw and per, like um, draw myself as. Oh, is it's, this it's, what we're looking a, at right now on the Google Meet? No, no, this is just like an album cover that I like. Oh, <laughs> but, okay. Um, uh, my my persona that I use is not like a human or a drawing of myself. It's just like a CD uh, character with limbs okay. and a face. <laughs> Interesting. It can work that way too. Doesn't just need to be attraction. <laughs> yeah. Well, listen. This has been so interesting. We appreciate you coming on and being so honest and kind of like uh, you know talk to us about this. How it was never really like a thing that I considered until we saw the email where I was like, ah. You know, and then, uh, you know, it was such a great example of being like walking into like a lingerie store and being like, oh, those are bras. And it's not like you're like, I'm going to go fuck the bra. It's kind of like I'm yeah. just feeling something yeah. because of seeing the bra. But then you, know you also I mean? might fuck mm-hmm. the bra later if you're alone. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, I like that. I'm glad you guys get it. And I'm so glad I can talk about this because it's like a big thing in my life. I wish I could talk about it. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm glad you reached out. And um, you're mm-hmm. clearly so secure in this, you know, part of you and that's that makes the conversation so interesting also just to hear from someone that you know you clearly aren't ashamed of this you've been lucky to Mm -hmm. you know find people who are accepting of it and that's just always refreshing to hear someone who's just owning it and then you're able to explain it so well and clearly so we we really appreciate that thank you i'm i'm very glad i feel like there's just a lot of like negativity surrounding the subject online like if you look up any video about objective sexuality all the comments are either negative or they're very condescending in the sense of oh this poor person can't feel love towards real people or or they're like i mean like oh this person must be mentally ill or something and it's like really 
kind of dehumanizing in a way. Yeah. I mean, you know, on a personal mm-hmm. level, I feel like, you know, you just can't forget that everyone online is an idiot. And that's that's just like a fact. Yeah, of course. Like, <laughs> you, I could convince 300 people right now that the moon is made of cheese. Like with enough like enough like, you know, enough tweets could make people believe anything. So I think that people yeah. are just like miserable and also like we'll go for the cheap joke. But, you know, in a setting like this where we're really trying to dive into like what are the reasons why people are into certain things and trying to understand like there are more people I think that are more understanding of these things than there are like in real life than there are online that are just pretending to, you know, think that like, Oh, this is so gross. Like something like that. Like Mm -hmm. it's just people online being like stupid, you know, like that's all the internet is, but no one really acts that way in real life. In in my experience, at least. Yeah. There is definitely negative experience people have had because of uh, of their sexuality, but I mean, that's inevitable. But right. you guys are right. It's definitely just people being stupid. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for coming on and taking the time to talk to us today. We really appreciate it. Guys, I'm, I'm glad I could talk about this. It means a lot to me. Yeah, no, this is a lot of fun and super interesting. So thank you. And good luck in all your relationships and future <laughs> objects you. that you uh, find <laughs> that you like. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> all right. Have a great day. You guys have a great day, too. Bye. Just like a stethoscope, you know what I mean? It's fucking... I honestly... You know what? The heartbeat thing? I get it. I mean, that's a very intimate scenario to of paint. Of course. But, yo, you know, what I, you know what I think when I was thinking about the stethoscope thing and, like, the heartbeat, hearing the heartbeat, or even, like, the stomach sounds, which, like, that one's a little further away from, you know, whatever, but... I think the heartbeat thing makes a lot of sense because something that I think that I'm very into during sex is breathing. Mm. So like <laughs> the way you said that, like breathing, like hearing someone's breath and like the the pace of their breath, mm-hmm. like that is like very arousing. Like during, I think for like most people, like would admit like, and also like moan. And like there's a moaning, there's like sounds, there's Because breathing. it's sort of, it's uncontrollable. And so is your heart starting to race. Right. And it's, just, and it's like, oh, you can feel that. The, and even if you're by yourself, but like you can he- feel like there's something else there that's also really enjoying this thing. It's like, I totally get that. I hope this guy gets to use the stethoscope on his partner. Because, Hell yeah. Oof. Or they both get them, and they're fucking Whoa. listening, and then getting, and then <laughs> fucking doing it. <laughs> Crazy. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. I feel like kind of warm and fuzzy after that conversation. Yeah, I'm I just, mean, I'm happy what, for him. I think that, like I said, I think people online are just like it's easy to be like, "Yo, this dude's into fucking clocks. What the fuck?" But like, <laughs> when you really think about it, like you, you know what I'm saying? Like when you walk and you see a pretty girl or something, you're like, "Oh, that's a pretty." Yeah. Like that's like a nice feeling that you weren't expecting to get at a certain point. It's Imagine something you hard. walk in and see a clock and you get that feeling. Like I, I'd be like, yo, it's awesome. Yeah, and it's it's definitely like I there is a sexual nature to it ultimately, but it's just more nuanced than that. Like him, yeah. it's almost as as well as you can explain it. It's hard to explain and pinpoint like that feeling. Like there's almost no words for it. It feels like of like that type not. of attraction and like that feeling that you're talking about yeah it's interesting it's not always it just feels like less a... harmless and like than people would probably assume like this guy's gonna come in and fuck all our clocks and jizz all over the yeah, stethoscope yeah. you know obviously that's insane but like you know what i you know what i think i can equate it to also is colors so when you see certain colors it's like scientifically proven that you're it changes your emotion or mm-hmm. like something mm-hmm. that's going on in your brain or whatever the fuck but like certain colors I feel like make you feel better or like, you know, like at certain times of the day or, you know, whatever, like I feel like I have an attraction to like colors sometimes where I'll see a color and I'll be like, Oh, that makes me either feel like safe or like comfortable is like the best word I can sort of think of. Cause it's not like sexual, but I definitely like can see certain colors or wear certain colors and feel more comfortable or something like that. Yeah. I think what you're saying is like, it's not, the thing we just talked about because there is a romantic and sexual aspect ultimately, but 
are we not all like yeah. right on the edge? We're like adjacent. guys who are obsessed with sports cars and like the sleekness and how it yes. does this and the paint and like us with watches. I mean, we probably send each other nine. 15,000 watches a day and yeah. like critique it. Like, what do you think? What about this? What about the bezel, the face that like, and like you said, with colors, with clothes, with fashion, with shoes, like so many of us are materialistic in a way where we pay attention to the detail, the feeling that it gives back to us. We're right there. Of course. We're right there. We're adjacent. Yeah. You know it's I'm in saying? the same ballpark. There's a very thin layer of plastic between us yeah. and the people who are like, I am sexually attracted to this thing. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? And, and I'm maybe sure more people are that would actually admit yeah, it. Yeah, maybe we're all just suppressing it. Yeah. You know what I mean? We need to let it. our freak flag fly a little bit <laughs> higher and start fucking these watches, is what you're yeah, saying. Well, I think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I agree. That's what I'm saying. I think that there are, there are, it's very close to the quote unquote normal human experience that we have to, like I said, like colors or certain objects or like, the feeling of nostalgia or like, or even people who are mm. collectors even, mm-hmm. you know, like mm-hmm. if you're big on collecting, you really appreciate mm. this fucking thing. Some people are just like, it's stamps. It's just who just gives a fuck? Thing. Yeah. But you're like, no dude. Oh, uh. you know, like that feeling, <laughs> fuck this thing. And then you fuck that thing. That's where we cross the line. But like, it's very close. We're all there. You cover yourself in stamps while you jerk off. Yeah. That's now where it gets like, a little different, yeah, but a, we're, we're, we're right we're there. Free, we're one drink away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> one lonely Halloween and Halloween. I meant to say Valentine's Day. <laughs> one lonely Valentine's Day away from covering myself in stamps. Anyway, for anyone out there <laughs> that would like to be on the show, hit us up. Our email is oplpodcast at gmail.com. Uh, send us your story and we'll get back to you. Follow us on Instagram and TikTok at OPL Podcast. Support the show at patreon.com slash OPL show. And that is it. Thank see, you. See you guys next time.